It all started in a little tank, in a little room of one young reef enthusiast. In October of 2010, George's Fungia plate coral suffered a major injury that would change his life forever. This is the story of how a plate coral and its owner wouldn't give up or lose hope. This is the story of one plate coral's four year journey from a fatal injury to being a selfless mother giving her life for her young. Prepare to go into the life of a plate coral and a young girl who would do whatever he could to bring new life to this world. This is the story of us. This is the story of how we survive. In October of 2010, George brought home a very beautiful, large, green fungia plate coral. Then in the new year, January of 2011, it's still blurry what happened, but I was doing a water change and I picked up a rock um, and it just, it just slipped and it accidentally fell on the edge of my plate coral. The flesh had been cut open, and now the white skeleton in the front of the plate coral had been exposed. It didn't look too bad, but I didn't want to take any chances, and um, I took it to the ER um, in the LFH, the local fish hospital, and they told me that it wasn't going to live for more than a few months. Give me a sec. Facing defeat in that summer, June of 2011, George tried his best to keep it alive. It was still fighting, but I didn't think it was ever going to fully recover. Then in August, everything changed. I was astonished, and after doing some research, I learned that uh, plate corals um, reproduced by leaving their babies on the areas they die. George was overjoyed when he saw the very first baby and they started growing and then more started growing. These are some of the very first video and images of baby plate corals after birth ever to be recorded. Sadly, there, there wasn't much information um, on this topic anywhere, which is why I agreed to come here and do this interview. By 2012, the plate coral had beaten its disease and was looking stronger than ever. They were growing at an incredible rate. I couldn't believe it. I had six or seven of them and they were growing fast and thriving throughout all of 2012. By January 2013, George had realized that one of its kids was especially bright. It grew bigger and faster than the rest of them and it looked like its mother so much. In the ending months of 2013, I remember it getting really bad. George's nano cube was getting very dirty and this had a detrimental effect on the plate coral. He knew that it didn't have much longer to live and he was deciding to switch it to his bigger tank. Later the next month, the plate coral perished and now the babies were fighting for their own lives. By the very end in 2013, now in 2014, I'm very proud to say that after nearly four years of fighting, I raised a baby play cool through its adolescence.
Okay, in part five, I'm going to be talking about uh, how to raise baby plate corals and everything you need to know about dying plate corals um, and what to do with their leftover offspring. During this full time lapse, I'll explain to you everything you need to know about baby plate corals. If your plate coral has completely died or just a section of it has died, leave it in your tank. It may take up to a year for baby plate corals to show that they are growing on the skeleton. The more you feed them, the quicker and faster they're going to grow. Make sure you're dosing plenty of calcium carbonate type elements in your tank. When they become a decent size, um, you're able to clip them off, but many will just simply fall off on their own. You might even get lucky if a plate coral like this $500 one dies and you get tons of $500 babies that, that are identical that you can sell for that much later. Please, please, please let me know if you have any more questions regarding how to take care of them. If you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe and just take a second to like it below. Thanks for watching.